Welcome back, folks. It's Friday, March 1st, 2024. On this date in 2007, a tornado outbreak across the South included one twister that killed nine people in Enterprise, eight of them students at Enterprise High School. Today, we have multiple in vitro bills, an Alabamian rebutting the State of the Union, and perfection in the pitching circle. I'm Mike Morgan, and we're down in Alabama. Both chambers of the Alabama legislature Thursday passed bills that would shield in vitro fertilization clinics from legal actions, reports AL.com's Mike Kasin. Now, the bills are nearly identical, so it's possible that early next week they'll be able to give final passage to one for the governor to sign. And the House of Representatives passed its bill 94 to 6, with four Democrats and two Republicans voting against it. The Senate passed its bill 34 to 0. Now, this almost certainly is not a permanent fix as lawmakers try to get IVF clinics reopened and operating quickly after the state Supreme Court ruled that human embryos had the same rights as children according to the state constitution. Now, as a matter of fact, an early version of the bill on Thursday would have automatically repealed itself in June 2025. That part was removed but we can consider this a Band-Aid fix for now to keep and reopen the clinics. One of the House sponsors, Decatur Republican Terry Collins, said she expects something more permanent to be carved out in the next year. The debate we might expect includes the personhood issue, you know, at what point does a fertilized egg become a person, whether the next step will be a state constitutional amendment, see the state high court ruling cited constitutional law, and how narrow or broad the clinic's immunity should be. That is, will the immunity remove legal recourse for patients who suffer unforeseen legitimate medical problems caused by their IVF services? Then again, maybe it wouldn't be a government law without unintended negative consequences. That's what got us into this to start with. If, in this presidential election year, the Republicans were looking for a contrast to President Biden to give the GOP response to the State of the Union address, they sure found it in U.S. Senator Katie Britt. Now, obviously, Biden's a man and Britt's a woman. Biden's from Pennsylvania and later Delaware. Britt's from Enterprise. And while Britt's a freshman senator, Biden won a Senate seat during the same election that Nixon beat McGovern. Now, 81... Biden had already been in Washington nine years when Britt was born. AL.com's Howard Coppola's reports that House Speaker Mike Johnson and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell announced Thursday that Britt would handle the GOP response that will be aired immediately after Biden's speech on March 7th. Now, whether any of those differences I mentioned means a hill of beans will be up to the viewer and surely whatever party the viewer favors. One advantage Britt has is that she can say what she wants to say without being interrupted by insincere applause every 12 words. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey pointed out in a statement that Britt will be the first Alabamian to give the rebuttal. Quote, sometimes the best man for the job is a woman. Right-handed pitcher Maddie Penta recorded the third perfect game in Auburn University softball history Thursday night at Jane B. Moore Field. Now, for those not highly versed in softball or baseball, pitching a perfect game means nobody on the other team reached base at all. You don't have to strike them all out, but you can't allow any base runners, even by fielder's error. So during the last inning of a perfect game, you always have seven fielders behind the pitcher, all of them on the inside thinking, please don't hit it to me. So on Thursday, the Tigers beat Georgia State 8 to nothing in six innings. Penta, who also threw a no-hitter just Sunday, topped that with her first ever perfect game. She struck out 13 of the 18 batters she faced. Well, thank you all so much for listening. I'm not kidding about those fielders during a perfect game. You, you don't want to be the person to ruin your pitcher's perfecto. Y'all have a great weekend. We're going to be back here on Monday. Until then, y'all come on by and see what we're up to on the internet at AL.com.